Manchester Manchester Music. Welcome. Uh, in this video, we're looking at Mallet Flux, a new instrument from Native Instruments. And um, I think it's pretty bold. These guys came out with this thing a little bit before Christmas, late November, I think. And I say bold just because it's tempting, I think, before the holidays to come out with something stringy that will sell. And uh, this is obviously not that. This is mallet-based, percussion-based. But it's got some things that separate it from other competitors like, you know, Virtus uh, Sticks or uh, Glass and Steel from Spitfire Audio or Skid Off Stones by um, uh, Sonic Couture. There's just stuff in here, and that's what I want to dive into and explore in this video. It's more of a kind of casual, relaxed, let's play, let's explore, let's just kind of hang out and see what this library has to offer. So right now I'm in a multi, so I've got Omni set for my MIDI channel. I'm playing two instances of the Mallet Flux instrument. There's two instruments uh, to this library. These, uh, you get the Mallet Flux single in KI and then the Flux uh, which is kind of where it's at. So I'm going to just flip over to the single instance so we can walk through this library together and show you how it all kind of comes together and works. But again, very casual. I'm not going to review this. We're just going to play around. So first off, we have the Mallet Flux, which is the engine here. Um, I don't want to replace that. I want to go over here and replace it with this. So what this means is you know, we can just play single instances of the five um, instruments that were sampled as part of this. Um, you know, sample library and instrument. Uh, Glockenspiel, if I click here, we have Celeste, Xylophone, uh, Vibraphone, and Marimba. You'll see that the keys change depending on the notes that could be sampled as part of this instrument. So for the Glockenspiel, uh, pretty, you know, decent range. For the Marimba, we get more real estate here, more can be sampled. I think there's a little bit less in the Xylophone, yeah, and even less in the Vibraphone, and the Celesta is, you know, notes with the widest range. So they change and vary depending on what you're using, of course. So if we stick with Celesta, we get two articulations here, soft, long, and reverse. And these are obviously mapped, as anything is these days, to a number of key switches in red here. Um, and if I go over here to the Glock, we have even more key switches or articulations, playing styles, hard, long, hard, short, soft, long, bowed, and reverse. I'll just go through a couple of these now. Uh, so you can hear what they sound like. We have, you know, envelope and microphone distance. So this will, if you go to closely to a drier sound, far will be, you know, more ambient. Um, double clicking does not return it to its default position. Neither does option click. So that's kind of annoying. Um, anyway, just have to bring it back yourself manually. So let's have a listen to the Glock, and we're going to go through the articulation starting with hard long. Hard short. Soft long. Bowed, which is nice for pads and stuff. Whoops. Reverse as well, which is kind of nice. If you're into the output stuff, you can get some reverse sounds here. So you can always change the envelope to make this more patty for Bode, for example. If you want to get rid of the sting of that initial attack, you would bring the attack up here so we don't really hit that, um, you know, that thwack, that initial transient. So there's the main page, and then there's the effects page. The effects page gives you access to time-based effects. Uh, we have IRC reverb and uh, you know other basic reverbs as well. So this is a convolution reverb. It models a space. Uh, and then you have the replica delay, which is kind of cool. So if you're a fan of the Native Instruments replica um, delay effect, then they've ported it out here into Mallet Flux. You turn it on, as indicated by the red dot, and then you can mess around with, I think, 30 or so different uh, presets, although I think we're in Native Instruments land, so they might be called snapshots. I don't know. I'm just going to say presets. And you can sync it to the host tempo right now. We're at 120 in Logic. Just the default, not, you know, uh, a track I'm actually using, just what it came with when I opened this session. So, for example, analog detune would sound like this.
So very far away from where we started with, you know, a basic glockenspiel sample. Let's go for hard, uh, short, just so we can get something to throw through the delay and get a bit more representation of what the, de the delay sounds like. Okay, so in my honest opinion, the action where this library really comes to life is in the mallet flux side. So single is great if you're just doing traditional um, style orchestrating or arranging, although uh, I say traditional with you know a grain of salt because with the effects you can get kind of wacky, but the mallet flux uh, and KI here is where you get the engine and where you get the kind of really cool stuff. Um, namely the ability to play all these instruments at once with their own uh, sequencing lanes that have two velocity layers so you can get really kind of tricky. Um, there's over 250 or I think 300 um, kind of presets that range uh, if I click on this center window here basic eighth one uh, you can you know uh, change it up type sequence single basic arpeggiated flux change the feel change the meter and of course you can't two finger scroll with a trackpad unfortunately native instruments fix that but you can just click on this little rectangle and go down and see all of you know the basic scenes they call them and they range and vary uh, wildly but let's just first have a listen to the the preset one that's kind of loaded the default one here basic eighth and you can see that these red lights indicate that the glock celeste xylophone vibraphone and marimba are all on and this is just a starting point so have a listen to this i'm just going to play a chord <laughs> So we see the sequencer moving across these steps that are kind of pre-programmed. And we also see that we can change the articulation or type strike style hard long. I can go in here. I can have, if I want to, a bunch, you know, five Celestas all doing, you know, the same thing or different things. You can go in and change it to soft long, bowed, reverse, whatever you want, customize it, make it your own. Um, but we can also change the envelope here. So we have attack decay, there's a filter type. And um, the real fun though is over here. So when I double click this, it's grayed out, you see. I'll click it and now we get access to the sequencer. And from here, we can um, go to each of the instruments that are made up as part of this, um, I wanna call them scenes, is that what they're called? Yeah, scene. Um, and we can change a lot of stuff. So you notice two layers here. This is where um, I think Mallet Flux is unique. There are two layers because there's two velocity layers. And with the mod wheel, when you go up and down with the mod wheel, you'll see, if I go back to this page, you'll see them shift and change here. So this is basically controlling the dynamics, the kind of loudness of these, uh, in a global way, of all of these instruments. So that's just me moving my mod wheel up and down. That's what it sounds like when I you know, play it. It sounds like this. So where this gets interesting is I can actually program two separate kind of velocity layers um, and toggle between them with the mod wheel. Uh, and so instead of just getting quiet loud as you move up and down, you can get loud, quiet, varied as you switch. So you get two different kind of styles. I'll show you what, what I mean here. If I double click or right click uh, on a trackpad, it's kind of funny, but I will go like this. And now you'll see, oops, I don't want to bring that up. You'll see we go into like a little plus sign. And now if I just click and drag, we get this red line that will allow me to change the velocities here. Nope. So now as I switch, now when I go down, it doesn't just get quieter, it's basically activating the peak level of all these velocities that I programmed on the bottom layer. And when I go up, we hit the kind of peak of all the velocities on the top layer, like that. So you can get something kind of varied and different and unique, which is kind of cool. <laughs> So 
So if I go back uh, to this page, you see that things stay the same relatively on this page where they're going up and down, but in this case we've changed it so, you know, uh, different layers do different things, which is kind of cool. Um, if I go back to this page, let's just explore some of the other sequencing options. So we can solo just hear what the glockenspiel is doing in abstract of all these other instruments here. Uh, take that off. By the way, if you hit solo here and go back, um, it is soloed on this page, so that's kind of helpful. Uh, if you're wondering why you're only hearing one thing, go back to this page and you'll see that you've just got one thing activated here um, in this sheet. Let's go back, unsolo that. You can fill, so you can use these kind of predetermined step patterns uh, to fill, you know, different sections of the step sequencer out, which is kind of nice. You can uh, change the pattern here from up and down to zigzag, something else, or chord. You can, um, what else do we have here? Octave range, repeat, length 16, you can go all the way to 30, uh, 32 steps, and see a new lane is opened up here for us to go in, and with your mouse, you just go in and click and you know, just add stuff, add whatever you like. And of course you can go in um, and right click and just drag to change the velocity layers, which is kind of fun. So uh, we also have reset over here. Uh, we can change the rate, um, so that's kind of nice. And we have these global settings over here. I'm just kind of jumping around because it's again, very informal. We have these global settings over here where you can change the meter, you can change the speed, or not the speed, but you know, uh, now we're kind of half speed here. Normal speed. Or twice as fast. going to return this to its default. I wish there were a button to do that right from the sequencer page or even from this page, but there doesn't appear to be. So I'm going to go just go find this again and go all the way down. There we go. So now we get this, you know, back to normal. Although we still have it set to 30. Uh, what, what did I do here? Yeah, there we go. Actually, that didn't reset anything. That's kind of interesting. I don't want it to do that anymore, though. Can I go back and change it? There we go. Um, I'm just in a different scene now. Whatever. So let us go back here uh, to humanize, which I wanted to show you. So this is kind of cool. The manual says that this introduces like random um, rhythmic shifts to, I think, emulate a live performance or a live playing style so that you're not stuck in kind of MIDI land, which is always a good idea. I would recommend that you right click on here and assign this to some kind of control on your MIDI controller, much like you would the dynamic mod, and just bring this up and down and record that automation as you're recording whatever it happens to be in your composition. So um, let's see if we can hear the difference first of all, because it's subtle, which is always a good thing, but again, it's helpful to hone in. So with, you know, humanized zero, it sounds like this. We're just going to keep playing the same chord. Let's just bring it to 100%. So I'm definitely hearing some, uh, I, I want to say like timing errors, but they're not so egregious that I feel like we're out of step with 120 beats per minute. They're just subtle enough that they add almost like a, a, a random swing amount for every note or something like that, or every other note. Um, it's really subtle, which is a good thing. Let's go back and instead of... Um, messing around with the sequencer, which I did a very quick and dirty overview of. Let's say we wanted to reverse all of these samples, which is kind of nice, because we can get into some sound design -y kind of territory and make something really weird. Let's go bowed and reversed for a lot of these guys. I don't know if every single one has a reversed or a bowed, but there we go. So we changed most of these instruments to bowed or reversed articulations, and it sounds like this now. <laughs>
so it's not just a straightforward kind of mallet you know instrument with a bunch of sequencers it can get pretty fun uh we have the main page as well and then we have the mix page which allows us to you know individually go in and change aspects of the instruments from the reverb to the panning delay um, this looks like another mic position thing so we go close or far away we have an equalizer down here as well a compressor and we get our send effects if we click on this tab which bring us back to the send effects that we saw in the mallet flex single nki so you can go in and tweak things to your heart's content um, I believe you can also create your own uh, scenes if you want, just like you would in any other, you know, native instruments, uh, kind of get up and save them. I believe you can do that. Um, one thing I wanted to show you was uh, if we go down here, uh, we have access to some kind of cool uh, beats, which, you know, again, speaks to the versatility of this library if you're looking to do something out of the box with it. Um, so let's just click on that. Have a listen to this. It's always a good idea when you're playing with these scenes to go around the keyboard because remember some of the keys uh, are not going to do anything because the notes that are sampled from that instrument you know might happen up or down or somewhere else on the keyboard so play with the range and just see what you get when you move up and down because now i'm getting the xylophone if i go back down here i might get access to some of the other stuff like the marimba. This reminds me a little bit of Concrete from Sonic Couture, which is kind of fun. Let's go back to one of the other ones. Uh, let's go to Flux Beat 3. Okay, there's a reverse that was either the marimba or the vibraphone, which is kind of cool because when I um, deselected the note, <laughs> we got like, I guess, the decay of the tail of that sample. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, what's kind of fun is that even though I'm doing percussive stuff, I'm still getting the soul of the key and the melody, which is kind of cool. So that's kind of fun. Anyway, um, really quick and dirty, if you've made it this far to the end of the video, uh, I guess what I'd say is I think this library is ideal for the kinds of new media that we're seeing now. Um, infotainment, YouTube videos, where there's some kind of you know voiceover and then infographics and just stuff being presented to you and you have a very delicate score to support the kind of sound that you hear uh, when you're watching something that you're where you're learning or digesting information. It's really good for that. Obviously you could put it wherever you want, but I just feel like um, with a lot of these, like, um, how do I put it? Kind of Netflix documentaries and BBC stuff, uh, even podcasts that are all about like news and presenting interesting information about, you know, culture and the way the brain works and stuff like that. I can't think of the, the names of these podcasts off the top of my head. They all have this kind of malady music in the background. Um, and this instrument is just a really easy way to get there quickly or to, you know, inspire yourself to go in a totally different direction. But I feel like, you know, uh, there is some healthy competition out there, but this uh, s these sequencers are very flexible. I still feel like I'm, I'm doing something wrong here when I when I right click and and drag this uh, velocity information out. I feel like it shouldn't be adding notes, but it is. Maybe in the comments someone can correct me. I'll, I'll probably get it wrong uh, as I go. But um, I think the fact that you can manipulate both layers of, uh, of, of these kind of step sequencers is really cool and novel. And the fact that you can switch between them is also, you know, welcome. Um, 
but yeah, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the sound of the the way this thing behaves, the ballistics, the horsepower underneath it? Uh, let me know in the comments. But I think that'll be it. I want to keep these things nice and quick and rolling and not like an hour and a half long just to give you a taste of what the library can do. And hopefully we did that today. Mallet Flux from Native Instruments. Competitors out there, I would say, I think I mentioned them at the top of this video. We have uh, Sticks by Virtu. We don't get the same traditional instruments sampled in that library. There's more like weird and wacky stuff. Not that this library can't get weird and wacky as well uh, but that's one um, uh, Sono Sonic Couture does uh, Skidaw Stones and I think Concrete would be a, an appropriate you know um, counterbalance to this library it's a bit more on the the, the wild kind of sound design affix to inside that library um, and then of course you've got stuff like glass and steel from Spitfire Instruments where uh, that's more them you know tapping brandy glasses and bowls and ceramics and stuff like that so again less traditional than this um, but I think you can almost morph mallet flux to get the sounds that you would find in concrete sticks or uh, Skadaw stones or glass and steel but anyway um, and also there's some vibe in this library that remind me a little bit of the Crystal Bache library. I think it's called Glass from Sonic Couture. So there's a few distant cousins and DNA that's connecting these uh, libraries together, but I think Mallet Flux offers something that is still different and interesting, especially with these two velocity layers, which I have yet to master clearly. But hopefully I, I showed you a little bit about how it works. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. As always, like, subscribe, you know what to do, or just go on with your life. Do whatever you want. Make good choices.